What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Fish the Moment. So, over the last few weeks in Arkansas, it's been really cold, and I haven't been able to get on the lake because of that. And so, while I've been sitting around my house thinking about how much I want to be fishing, I started looking back through some of my old YouTube videos, and I got this crazy idea to record every single fish catch I had in all my YouTube videos and see what interesting data I could get from that. And so, what I did is I literally counted every single fish catch that I had and the size of that fish, the bait I caught that fish on, and the season that I caught that fish in. And so I have over 170 fish catches recorded here, and I decided to visualize them and show you guys what the data says. And it's actually really interesting, and I think it can help both you and me become a better bass fisherman this year. So let's get into it. So I decided to visualize this data using a heat map. And for those of you who don't work in data analytics and make PowerPoints for a living like I do, let me explain what this graph is showing you. So as you can see, there are several colorful rectangles on this graph, and there's baits inside of them. And in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the name of the bait and a percentage next to it. And basically, the area of all of these rectangles combined equals 100%. And so the rectangle labeled jig has a 29% by it. That means that 29% of the fish I caught across all my YouTube videos were on a jig. And then 25% of all the bass I caught across all my YouTube videos came on a crankbait, the 9% on a buzzbait, 6% on a jerkbait, so on and so forth. And so I'm going to use this visualization to show you guys the different baits that I catch my fish on across all my YouTube videos. And I'll also break these by the size of bass I'm catching and the time of year. And by looking at all that, we get some really interesting results. So this first graph here is the most broad I can cut the data. And it basically shows every bass over two pounds I caught on my YouTube videos across every single season. So spring, winter, fall, every season. And as you can see, over 50% of my bass across all my YouTube videos were caught on either a jig or a crankbait. Again, this is regardless of time of year or size of bass. It's just saying that 50% of my fish are caught on either a jig or a crankbait. And this is actually really funny because when I was fishing tournaments, uh, my friends would always make fun of the fact that I literally only fished a jig and a crankbait. And it's because I have a lot of confidence in those baits and they catch big fish. And then as you go further down, you can see I catch a lot of fish on a buzz bait, a jerk bait, and then, you know, after that, it kind of is just random. There's a lot of other baits that I throw throughout the year and catch fish, but really my uh, four main staples are the jig, crankbait, buzz bait, and jerk bait. So that was kind of interesting, but it wasn't really all that insightful. And so next up, I decided to cut the data for only bass over four pounds. So that means that this graph is showing you the percentage of four pound plus bass I caught on each bait. So that's a four pounder, a five pounder, six pounder, etc. And so what it's showing is that 34% of my bass over four pounds across all my YouTube videos in any season came on a jig. 17% came on a crankbait, 10% on a uh, buzz baits, 10% of the frog, and then everything else uh, goes down from there. And again, you can see the jig is my best bait for catching uh, four plus pound bass. And you can also see that 20% of my four plus pounders come on top water lures, which is also pretty interesting. Next up, I decided to cut the data even further to five pound plus bass. So again, these are the baits I use to catch five plus pound bass in any season across all my YouTube videos. And so 36% of my five plus pounders came on a jig, 14% on a jerk bait, 13% on the buzz bait, and then 11% on crank baits, and then it goes down from there. So again, a kind of a common theme, the jig is my best bait for catching fish of any size really, and also it's my best bait for catching bigger fish. And it's kind of surprising to see that jerk bait jump up there so high. Seems like I catch a lot of good five pound plus bass on that jerk bait, which is probably mainly coming from the winter time. And then that buzz bait sticking around is a really good bait. Catch a lot of big fish on that thing. So uh, pretty interesting breakdown for those five plus pound bass. Okay, so the last graphs I just showed you were my best baits across all seasons. So spring, summer, winter, fall. But now I want to start cutting the data to show you what my best baits are in each season. And we'll start with the winter. So here's where it starts to get really interesting. So as you can see here, this is a cut of all of the fish that I caught in my YouTube videos of any size that I caught in the winter. And so what this is saying is that 36% of the bass I catch in the winter come on a jig. 
30% come on a crankbait, 24% come on a jerkbait, and 10% come on an Alabama rig. So you can see there's only four categories of baits up here. And right away you might be thinking, Johnny, you need to start throwing a more baits. You're uh, limiting yourself by only throwing four categories of baits. And to be fully transparent, I've caught a lot of other uh, fish outside of my YouTube videos on other baits. But again, I'm only looking at the fish I've caught in my YouTube videos. And so again, I've caught fish on shaky heads, drop shots, swim baits, you know, all kinds of baits in the wintertime. But over the years of fishing, I've found that my best success comes when I stick to these four baits. And so the reason you only see four lures on, uh, on this graph is actually on purpose because I really do just stick to these baits because I have the most success with them on dirty water lakes, on clear water lakes, different types of lakes, you know, different water temperatures. If I can normally keep these four baits in my hand, I know I'm gonna have a lot of really good success. And so if you look at my YouTube videos in the winter, I normally am able to catch 12 to 15 pounds with a relative ease on the lakes I'm familiar with just by fishing these baits and so I don't really feel the need to diversify and fish other baits. Now that doesn't mean that I won't fish other baits in the winter time uh, if the situation calls for it but when I'm really looking to put keepers in the boat I stick with these four. Okay, so next up, let's cut this data by fish size. So this graph shows all the fish I catch in the winter, they're over four pounds, so four plus pounders. As you can see, 45% of my four plus pounders in the winter time come on a jerk bait, 41% on the jig, and then 14% on a crank bait. And this is actually the first time the jig isn't the uh, best bait in one of these graphs. And so, as you can see, a jerk bait is a really good bait for catching big fish in the winter time. And a jerk bait's just a really good imitator of dying shad and those big lazy bass like to come up and eat those dying shad when the water temperatures get below 45 degrees. And so it's really my go-to bait for big fish in the winter. And then the jig is a really good bait as well. As you can see, um, you catch big fish, you can also put a lot of fish in the boat. It's a good limit filler as you saw from the last graph. So, you know, all these baits work really well, but if I'm going for big fish, it's the jig and the jerk bait. And again, to reiterate this point, you only see three baits on this graph. The Alabama rig actually fell off of this graph, but that doesn't mean I haven't caught four plus pound bass on an Alabama rig at some point in the winter time. Uh, I just caught them outside of videos or in the past before I was making YouTube videos. Caught a lot of big fish on Alabama rigs in the winter time. So this data might be slightly skewed um, just because I don't have all of the fish catches from when I was 10 years old recorded. That's only those uh, fish that are in my videos, but it should still give you a general idea of the baits I'm throwing and I'm successful with. So again, take these results with a grain of salt. Uh, they'll get us about 80% of the way there, but they're not perfect by any means. Okay, so next up, we're actually gonna skip the pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn for these charts. Just because I don't really have very many videos in that time of year, I was actually in college for most of the time I've had this YouTube channel and I wasn't able to film very much during the semester. And the results were just very skewed and they weren't representative of what I normally fish that time of year. So we're skipping straight to the summer. And so let's look at uh, summertime baits. They're really good for me. Okay, so here's a breakdown of my best baits in the summertime for any size fish. So again, two plus pounders. As you can see, 34% of my summertime bass of any size are caught in the jig, 19% were caught in the buzz bait, 16% on the crankbait, and then 12% on a frog, and then the rest kind of goes down from there. And so it's pretty interesting that uh, over 30% of my fish in the summertime come on topwater baits and then the jig is the number one bait again for summertime fishing. The jig is just gonna be number one on pretty much every graph. When it's not, that's something to actually look out for. And then crankbaits are up there as well as always. Love to fish uh, crankbaits in pretty much any season. So again, we're gonna cut this data by the size of fish. And so this is a graph of all the four plus pounders I've caught in the summertime. And so as you can see, 36% of my four plus pounders come on a jig in the summer and then 22% came on the buzzbait, 17% on the frog, and then 11% on crankbaits, and then you'll see 7% split between a worm and a spoon. So again, the jig is the best performer in the summertime for uh, numbers of fish and size of fish, and then top waters come in after that. And so 
normally when I'm looking for fish up shallow, I'm fishing the top waters in the summertime and you can catch a lot of good fish all summer long up shallow on those top waters. And if I'm fishing offshore, I'm either going with the jig or the crankbait and then I'll mix in, you know, the spoons, worms, hair jigs, stuff like that to, uh, you know, give a different look to those offshore fish in the summer. So then finally, let's cut this data by the fall season. And this graph shows all the baits I use to catch fall bass of any size. So as you can see, 45% of my fall bass were caught on crankbaits, 28% came on jigs, 12% came on swim baits, 9% on the buzz bait, and then 7% on the worm. So a couple interesting things to take away from this graph is at first, crankbaits are my number one bait in the fall and they actually beat out the jig for the first time. Finally, the jig is at number one. And crankbaits are great in the fall because bass are feeding up heavily on shad and you can cover a lot of water with crankbaits. A lot of times bass spread out in the fall. And so I like to cover water with crankbaits, fish fast, and I catch a lot of good fish on them. And then, as you can see, I catch a lot of fish on the jig as well. Uh, a lot of times in the fall, bass will feed on crawfish later in the fall. And then you have the swim baits, which I normally throw for suspended bass. And then the buzz bait, which actually takes the place of a spinner bait for me in the fall. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are probably like, where's, where's the spinner bait? Where's the drop shot? Where are all these baits? And again, I've caught fish on a spinner bait in the fall, obviously, but I just haven't done it in my YouTube videos. And mainly uh, what I found is that I can actually fish a crank bait and a buzz bait and cover all the same areas that a, a spinner bait would normally cover. And because so many people are fishing a spinner bait, I normally can fish right behind people and get some bites on those two baits. And so again, this list isn't exhaustive of all the baits I've used to catch fish in the fall across my entire life. It's just the baits I've caught fish uh, on in my YouTube videos. And then finally, I cut this data by the size of fish I catch in the fall. So this is a graph of all the four plus pounders I catch in the fall. And it's almost poetic justice that my two best baits for catching four plus pounders in the fall are a jig and a crankbait. And pretty much the theme of this entire video is that jigs are my best bait for catching numbers of fish and size of fish year round and crankbaits are right behind and so if you look at a lot of my youtube videos you notice i catch a lot of fish on crankbaits and a lot of fish on jigs and it's just because they work really well they're very versatile you can fish jigs deep you can fish jigs shallow same with crankbaits they work in all seasons and if you had to take two baits out on the water with you to try to go catch a bass i would recommend taking a jig and a crankbait. Okay, so that was a lot of data that we just went through. And I don't know if you guys love going through these statistics and data as much as I do. Uh, I was nerding out with all of these data points and making all these charts. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video up to this point if you're even still here. Uh, but what I wanna do now is tell you about some of the takeaways I got from this data that hopefully are gonna help me become a better bass fisherman in 2019 and that could also help you become a better fisherman uh, now and in the future. So my first key takeaway is that the jig is my best fishing lure. I catch the most fish and the biggest fish on it. And I really probably should be keeping that bait in my hand more than I do. I already fish it a lot, but as you can see, it catches me a lot of good fish. And I actually try to be versatile and fish a lot of different baits. And I probably don't fish a jig as much as I should. And so if I start fishing tournaments later this year, I probably should look for areas to fish that jig just because it's something I'm good at fishing, I have a lot of confidence in, and it catches big fish. And so, uh, you know, if you're not fishing a jig or you're not comfortable using one, just give it a shot. Go out, watch some of my videos where I've caught jig fish. I have a playlist on my channel, a link right here that is all about jig fishing. Uh, it's all my jig fishing videos in there. And maybe I'll even make a video on how to fish jigs. If you think that's a good idea, put a comment down below and I can try to make that video. But overall, uh, if you look here, you know the jig was the top bait in every season, uh, except for the fall. And it's just a great bait year round as you can see it's still in the top two so definitely be checking out jigs if you're not throwing them already and another thing i took away from making this video is that i don't catch as many fish on a variety of baits as i thought i did i fish a lot of different baits when i make my youtube videos and i think that i'm really versatile and i'm trying all these different random baits i see on the elite series and read magazines but in the day i end up catching most of my fish on the same baits you know every season and every year. 
And so that's really interesting to me, and it has me wondering if I should maybe try to gain more confidence in other lures and you know try to expand my repertoire of lures and maybe I can catch more fish that way rather than just sticking to the jigs and the crankbaits and topwaters. But then another part of me is thinking, well, you're trying a lot of these other baits and they're just not that successful on the lakes that I'm fishing. And so maybe it's best to just stick to the three or four best baits that I catch a lot of good fish on each season. Uh, like if we look back here at the graph of the winter fishing, should I maybe experiment and fish a Demiki rig or a blade bait or fish some vertical jigging spoons, stuff like that? maybe or should i just focus on these four baits because i know they catch me big fish and even you know filter it down even further just to those baits that catch me four plus pounders should i just focus on the jerk bait the jig and the crank bait just put those on deck of the boat and just fish those and go fishing because i know they work and i don't really know the answer to that question i'm not sure if it would be better to try to expand my repertoire of baits and fish a lot of new baits in 2019 or if i should just stick to the baits that i know work and i have a lot of confidence in so what i want to do is leave it up to you guys leave a comment down below whether you think i should try to fish a lot of new baits in 2019 or if i should just stick with my baits that i have success with and just try to focus on refining my skills with those and catching uh, more fish on the baits i already know work so guys that's it that's all the data i had to look at and i hope you enjoyed the video i actually had a blast making it and i feel like i learned a lot about my own fishing and I realized which baits work really well for me. And I also realized that I might not be as versatile as I think I am, and I might need to start trying some new baits. So it was pretty eye-opening for me, and I hope it was informative for you guys as well and gets you thinking about the different types of baits you should be trying each season and uh, maybe things that you can do to improve your own fishing. So if you enjoyed the video and you like the content, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. Also hit a thumbs up on the video. It really helps out the channel and helps me make more content just like this and obviously subscribe if you haven't subscribed already to get notified of more content so thank you so much for watching this video and it, again hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time